Hey everybody, welcome into the SEC on CBS Post Game presented by Belfour, the leading disaster recovery partner for businesses and communities. Russ Thaler here in the HQ studio, joined by Emory Hunt as Alabama comes back from a 20 to 7 deficit at half at home to Tennessee, turn it all the way around and win 34 to 20. Where was the, the third quarter was all Alabama. Where was the inflection point in this game? I thought right before halftime, Russ, when you saw the touchdown pass to Burton from Jalen Milroy, and after that touchdown, he just got into a zone, started to settle down, started knocking down passes. The accuracy was where it needed to be. Sort of maneuver well within the pocket, find guys deeper down the field, sort of make more plays for this offense playing above the X's and O's. And then after that, that's when we saw Alabama's offense start to get into this game, and that's why we saw these points start to add up. Jalen Milroy, 14-21. 220, two touchdowns, and a pick for Alabama. But what was the difference between these two teams in the second half? Third quarter defense for Alabama. The Crimson Tide started to look like the old Crimson Tide in terms of how they were collapsing the pocket, driving on the football in the secondary, smothering the quarterback, Joe Milton, and putting the ball on the turf. Church's money's on the ground is what they called it. He was able to pick it up and get to the end zone. So they got a defensive touchdown, started to get sacks, started to get turnovers. That's was the biggest difference in this ball game in the second half. Alabama. 7-1 with the win. Tennessee we'll get to in a second. They're 5-2. 7-1 Alabama doesn't feel like a dominant 7-1 to me. What's what's their Achilles heel? What's their problem right now? Why don't they feel like a dominant Alabama team? Because we don't know who's a dominant tailback, which is time to roll off it. We don't know who's a dominant receiver out there on the perimeter that really threatens you. And their quarterback, they're now starting to figure out what he does well. So we don't really see Alabama offensively clicking like we normally saw uh, this Crimson Tide team click a lot before uh, this season. And on defense, who's their dominant pass rusher? Who's that threat on defense? Are teams really fearing Alabama defensively? I don't think so, but hey, you can't argue with 71. No, you can't, and they also get the week off next week. What's Nick Saban and his crew going to be working on with this team in the off week? Pump return. You saw Kool-Aid McKinstry misjudge so many punts. I'm surprised Nick, get, uh, Nick Saban ain't blow a gasket on the sideline, giving up a lot of field position, but I do think they'll work on those small things, like how to protect better up front along the offensive line. Special teams, those are those hitting yards that we talked about. So those things, I feel like, or where they can get better. If you tie up those loose ends and maybe win two of the three aspects of a game, you have a chance of running the table the rest of the way. This really was a tale of two halves in this football game. It looked for all the world. Look, Tennessee hadn't won in Tuscaloosa since 2003, and they still haven't won 20 years going now. That's 10 straight losses for the Volunteers on the road at Alabama. What was the difference in this game? Why was Tennessee able to get up 20-7, to and why couldn't they score after that? I felt like they got conservative, man. We saw in the first half them throwing the football downfield. Joe Mill using his legs, picking up yards on the ground. The run game was a good compliment. And then in the second half, I felt like they closed the playbook. And that's why we saw Alabama slowly work themselves back into this ball game, made it a tight game. And then Tennessee couldn't really jumpstart that offense once again. And they found themselves on the wrong end of the scoreboard. And obviously, the, the fumble for the touchdown was a big key. Milton has to feel that pressure. He didn't feel the pressure. The ball came out, Alabama rescored, scooped, and got into the end zone. Tennessee does not have an off week next week. They go to Kentucky, but what's Josh Heupel and his team have to improve upon now? They're 5-2, and two, pretty much out of, like, the national championship conversation at this point. They're still 5-2, and two, still have a chance to have a really good season here. What do they need to improve upon? Balance. you got to find some semblance of balance on offense, whether it's using a run game to, to, to really open up your passing game or vice versa, but you have to – Joe Milton can't be your leading rusher moving forward. All right, Emory, thank you very much. Alabama down 20 to 7 at the half. They picked up 27 more points in the second half and ran away with this thing, keeping Tennessee off the board and going on to win by two scores, 34 to 20, in a game that didn't necessarily feel like a two touchdown spread kind of game. Well, that's exactly what it has turned out to be. For more on what went down in SEC country this afternoon, we welcome in CBS Sports lead college football analyst Gary Danielson. Gary, what was the difference in this game between the first half and the second half? Because it was stark. Yeah, well, Alabama, I thought, got going on first down in the second half. They Remember, they opened the second half with that long 25-30 uh, yard run, then a beautifully designed play by Tommy Reese for the touchdown to Isaiah Bond, and then the mistake on the kickoff where they got the ball down to the three-yard line. It was a wasted possession. 
and a fourth down decision by Josh Heupel that didn't turn out well. It just kind of stumbled out of control for Tennessee. Crimson Tide are seven and one now, Gary, but for some reason they don't feel like a dominant <laughs> Alabama team that we've grown accustomed to. What screws do they need to tighten up here as the season gets into the end stretch? It's a good point, but I do think they did a really good job of the Tennessee rush game. Yeah, you know, that's a running team that had been gaining over 200 yards a game. They held Jalen right under control. They forced Tennessee to find a running game with the quarterback, Joe Milton. So give them credit of being able to stop the run, and ultimately that was enough because the passing game for Tennessee could not keep pace. So for Alabama, what are they going to do? Continue to grow with Jalen Milrow. They've got potential playmakers in the second with their wide receivers. I mean, you know, they can throw it to Burton. Isaiah Bond's a good player. They got two tight ends. And then I think Chase McKellen is a real force if they can find the line of scrimmage. First half, they had nothing. But in the second half, I thought they ran the ball really effectively. Gary, there was great joy on Rocky Top for a short period of time, at least the first half here. What went wrong and what does Josh Heupel's team need to do to bounce back from this which has to feel like a game they could have had they could have I, I think that you know from my vantage point I thought it was the inability and it's been a problem for Tennessee all year the ability to score touchdowns in the red zone I mean when they went down there and they kicked field goals that game could have easily been 21 3 21 nothing early in that game kept Alabama in it and ultimately, that proved points that they really needed at the end. Yeah, the Crimson Tide got a scare at home in the first half, but come back big time in the second half to take out Tennessee. That is CBS Sports lead college football analyst Gary Danielson. Gary, thank you so much. Much appreciated. You got it, guys. Thank you. Last 10 meetings in Tuscaloosa have all gone the way for the Crimson Tide over the Volunteers of Tennessee. 10 wins to no losses for Alabama, and they have outscored Tennessee by an average of about 20 points. This game, not really different, a 14-point spread, even though Alabama was down 20 to 7 at the half. Crimson Tide come back to win it 34 to 20 at home. Russ Thaler and Emory Hunt back in the HQ. It's time to reveal our bell for player of the game as Alabama takes out Tennessee 34 to 20 in Tuscaloosa. Who's the man in Tuscaloosa after this one? How about Jalen Miro, man? To be completely honest, he has played outplayed Joe Milton all season long, and he has gotten better as the season has gone on. And in this ball game, when he started to settle down and started to find targets in the passing game, started to work the intermediate level of the field, making plays with his legs. I know the numbers may not reflect that, but the passing game is what got Alabama back into this contest and ultimately gave them what they needed to win. So I thought he played a fantastic game from the pocket, using his arm to lead the way. Jalen Milrow and the Bama defense coming up huge for the Crimson Tide in that 34-20 win over Tennessee. Emory, thank you very much.